All right. Hello, everyone. So, wow, that was an interesting journey so far. I think we've learned a lot of cool stuff. And I'm really excited now to add in with um, the dungeon map part, where we now are going to start and build an encounter map for the final showdown. Um, so without any further ado, let's just right jump into it. When I do um, battle map design, when I create and plan my battle maps, I have found a very helpful concept that I like to fall back to and use as an inspiration. And whoop, that was the wrong button. I needed to go here. And that is the five room concept by John Ford. Now, if you know that, that's perfect. If you haven't never heard about it, um, go to roleplayingtips.com where he introduced the concept in details. To give you a brief understanding of what he says is if you want to build a dungeon map, and keep in mind, he was mainly talking about theater of the mind map design or theater of the mind dungeon design, I should say. Um, you only need five rooms um, or five areas. You need an entrance with a guardian that kind of protects this dungeon to make sure that no one else has looted it before, um, followed up by a puzzle or a role playing challenge, which kind of changes the um, or, or tailors to, to different player styles where some like to fight, some like to solve puzzles, some like to role play a lot. So you're going to bring different tones in here. Um, once they have overcome this room or this area, they are confronted with a trick or a setback to shake up the game to make sure that they, they're always um, on, on, on their footing when it comes to changing the pacing or changing uh, the game, the map in our case. Then the fourth room will lead up to the climax, which is obviously the final showdown, the big battle, um, whatever it is, what you're bringing there. And finally, you want to give them uh, loot, you want to give them a revelation of what has happened here. Um, you might hint things that are going to be interesting for the next adventure. So you could put mission objection, uh, objectives there. And that's basically the concept that uh, um, this five room dungeon uh, idea offers. So um, we're going to take that um, and we're going to build the alchemist's mansion. Um, so the first thing I usually do is I look at what am I going to do and how do I want to set that scene. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of designing the map prerequisite here where I say, okay, what do I need? Um, what is the inspiration, source of inspiration here? Um, and leading up to that decision was that um, we've learned that when the party returns from the, um, from the vampire, um, they come back to the village and they realize that the alchemist and some of the influential people of town have uh, left to the mansion. They all went up to the estate for a dinner. And that definitely means we need an estate map. So to get an understanding of what map I am building, I usually go into the interwebs and search for some inspiration. So like, for example, this building that for me is a good mix between the Adams family um, and, and, and Frankenstein and obviously something vampiristic or dark. Um, another great source obviously is looking for relatable blueprints. Now, when I look for this adventure, I found this beautiful um, layout that could be used as the layout for the mansion of the, uh, gl the glass shaker mansion from the alchemist. Um, now, apparently for this workshop, this would be a little bit too much to build together. So I started to look at the map and I started to say, okay, how can I condense this into a map that is playable within one session? Because this is a beautiful map and I would love to build it, but I know for sure that my players will spend more than one session in that mansion. And um, again, for the sake of this workshop, we need to find something that is a little bit more condensed. So before we're starting to condense that, how can we translate the five room concept into the map that we are making? 
Um, and the first recommendation I would give to you is um, don't picture those rooms as rooms. We don't want to build five rooms that are just lined up on a per chain. What we want to create is five scenes or five areas of interest. So we're going to use that concept. Um, the next thing that is, I think, very important because we are now talking about map design and not theater of the mind anymore is the map should allow the players to explore. There should be areas that they can go to, there should be different routes that they can explore. So we should um, keep that in mind when we create the map. Um, I think also very important is when you create big maps and you want to have a consistent um, gameplay, you should avoid backtracking a lot, or if you have to, you should make it meaningful. You will see in a minute what I mean. Um, obviously, we need to plan space for combat. People like our players, the PCs, they will be fighting and we need enough space to allow combat. We need to pay attention to um, casters and ranged fighters. We need to pay attention to close combat. We need to pay attention to running distances. So we have to keep that in mind when we design a map. Um, and I think most importantly, we have to prepare that our players are going off the rails in a minute. Like, the saying is uh, a plan only exists uh, as long as it, like one minute until, until the action takes place, something like that. Um, so we know that whatever we do with the battle map, the players are going to do something completely different. Okay, so I took the map again, this was the original map um, and I took it and I tried to con condense it into a smaller map that we can build together in this workshop. And as you can see, we have here, we have the foyer, um, where they might possibly enter. We have the dining room where they are expecting that's that the alchemist and, and the townsfolk are residing. I have added a ballroom. I will talk about that in a minute, um, a launch. And then we have something like the living area where the master's bedroom is and the study. Whereas also we have a kitchen for the servants and the servant access that leads into the ballroom because you don't want to have servants who carry dirty dishes directly through the guests in your ballroom. So that is the basic concept that we have here. And now we need to understand how we can work those five concepts into this map. So um, the first the first um, we know is the guardian. So when the PCs arrive, we need a guardian scene. Um, now we've already learned that the bridge suddenly comes alive and is a mammoth mimic, uh, thanks to Nerdiki here, um, which means that we have our perfect guardian. What else can you do than say, okay, here's the bridge, here's the mansion, you're approaching it and you are suddenly fighting a giant bridge which I think sounds really scary. So when I create the map, I factor in that I now need um, a river and a bridge because that is part of the full encounter map. So number one, we are placing here our guardian. Number two is we, well, if we haven't TPK'd our party with that giant mammoth um, mimic, what a word. Um, then they are going to approach the mansion. So step number two, we've already learned, should be a puzzle or a role-playing challenge. Um, I think there is a very clever and easy way to do that. The second you, they approach the mansion, a servant opens the door um, and says, do you have a dinner invitation? Um, and suddenly they are confronted with an RP challenge because they cannot get access to that mansion if they cannot role play them inside it. Now, if I would play this map with my players, I'm pretty sure that after they have battled that giant bridge, they will not just walk up front to the mansion and enter it. I am pretty sure that they will try to sneak around the house and find a back entrance. So we have a perfect opportunity here to combine this into an RP challenge and the puzzle um, in the same space where we say, if they are very role play heavy, they will try to gain access either by talking to this servant or either by convincing some um, servants that are having uh, 
I don't know, smoke at the, at the back entrance, um, or they will try to find a way to sneakily get into that building. So here we are. I think this is, this is a perfect way to, to prepare for that which means that they are now somehow inside. And that means that we are now at step number three. And step number three is it is time to confront them with a the setback. So the idea behind the setback is that your players are, they have overcome the guardian. They have solved the puzzle. They are inside the mansion. Um, they feel undefeatable. And now it is time to change their expectation on that. And I think a great thing for that would be that they have expected a small dinner party in that mansion, but there is a full ball, like probably mas masquerade um, going on with many, many guests who are all masked and suddenly all their beautiful plans, because again, my PCs would have spent a lot of time outside the mansion coming up with the perfect plan. Now this plan falls apart. So this is the setback we are confronting them with. Um, so here you see, we just generally say the dinner, the, the abandoned dinner table, the filled ballroom, people who are hanging, in, hanging out in the lounge, people who are strolling through the foyer, all of that is part of our setback scenario here. Well, finally, they will make their way into the ballroom where the alchemist stands and chats and, and is, is um, flamboyant. Um, so it is time for the showdown. This is our climax scene. But I think what we need to pay attention to is the fact that your players might um, completely overthrow your plans. They might just go in and blast the fireball into the, um, into the ballroom because they expect that there are just vampires in there. Um, or um, they might be stronger than you've expected. So a great way to work something in here that also allows some uh, meaningful backtracking is, uh, sorry, that's already the next, um, is that when the alchemist gets in trouble, he flees. Um, so he tries to get away to his secret chamber and he's definitely going to use the servant access for that, which means that if the full mansion has layer actions, they would be perfect to hinder your players from just jumping in and defeating him in an instant. So we can work a chase in here where he's now trying to get from the ballroom back to his, uh, his secret lair that we're going to talk about in a minute. Because where is the loot? Well, apparently the loot um, is uh, in his secret lair, the one that he is keeping hidden from everyone else. And by now he has either lured the players effectively there because he could escape and retreat to his secret lair. And now we have the final battle there or because your party was just really effect efficient and they just killed him right away. And um, then you can drop a MacGuffin like a skeleton key or whatever you can come up with um, that hints the party that there is more than they have expected. So the secret chamber is then the revelation where, the, where it is revealed that he has those pools of blood where he siphons the vampires, where he probably keeps his private little vampire slave that he drains whenever he needs a midnight snack. Um, and this is how we are going to approach the map. Now keep in mind that if we build it like that, we will definitely want to add something like a secret door or hidden access that leads down into the secret chamber. Okay, to sum this up very briefly, um, we pay attention to the areas of interest, we allow exploration, we create ways for meaningful backtracking, um, we keep enough space for combat, <laughs> and we are prepared for the chaos. Right, so, if you would like to follow me, for those of you who have um, created a free Dungeon Fork account, for those of you who already have a Dungeon Fork account, you can now open your Dungeon Fork um, website, log in there. By now, we have, we should have um, already, yes, thank you, Thomas. Um, we should have already posted on several channels, I think in our Discord, as well as in the chat. 
we should have posted a blueprint for you, the map that I've just shown you, so you can use that as a reference. And we will, where is my, I have no idea, where is my attention fox screen? There it is. Right, so if you follow me, again, if you want to, um, we can work accordingly with each other. I will show you what to do, you can follow me there, um, or you just lean back and watch. So the first thing we are going to do is um, we are going to create a new map. I have already prepped that a little bit. So it has already a name. It has a brief description. It has some tags. Um, and for this map, I would ask you, please, to create a map size, because that's what the blueprint was designed for, with 100 pixels per grid and a map size of 50 by 36. Okay, one more time, and then you can ask in the Dungeon Fork chat. We will post that um, if you haven't caught um, that. It is 100 grids, uh, 100 pixel per grid, and then the map size is 50 by 36. Once you're there, perfect. All you need to do is open, sorry, I need to look here, um, open the map. Um, that will bring you into the Dungeon Fork interface. And since you should by now have received the uh, blueprint, um, you can download it from the links, you can download it in our Discord. Um, you can add this blueprint by activating, like when you click on the stage, you can activate show blueprint and then click to add one and then just simply upload the image and add this blueprint. As you can see, it is already optimized for the map that we are working with. Oh, there's a table here. Um, let me just quickly adjust my camera a little bit. There you go. Um, and click on apply. And that will add this blueprint as a backdrop to the map that you're working with. Now, the first thing I want to do is I just want to reduce the transparency or in increase the transparency so, that, so it's not as disturbing. And the next thing I'm going to do for now is I'm going to scale to fit. Let's bring that back for a second. So this is the blueprint that we have been looking at, and this is the map that we are going to design. The second thing I want to point out is thanks to Kiora, we have now a over a hundred assets pack. So that's a hundred assets, a bit more, I think, um, that are from Kiora himself. And they are, uh, they are available for free. So free users and premium users alike can access that. And you can find that in several instances. Let's just briefly name that ground level. Um, when you click on the floor texture, for example, um, it will bring up your texture interface. Um, and there you can find Kiora Dark Lord and here we have the textures that Kayora has created for us. Um, now, for the map, I will pick the dark blue grass here. By the way, the grid is really disturbing. I will turn this into a black grid and reduce the transparency a little bit so we don't have that terrible grid. Um, and just to go back at 100%, you will see that if you just apply the texture like this, it is very tiled. So what we can do is we increase the scaling of the texture. So instead of 100%, we put here 1000%. And now the texture is scaled at 1000%, but it works perfectly fine for this map because now it is very detailed. OK. So the next thing I would like to do is I would like to show you how we can draw the river. So for that, I'm going to use the room tool. And um, let me just quickly save this room settings. I'm going to need them later. So I've just created a room here to store my settings. This is, you don't have to follow me there. Um, this is just for me. Um, I'm creating a room, but I'm not creating a normal room here because it should be a river um, and not a room. I'm creating, I'm using the cave setting for that. So I'm going into cave setting. I'm now picking the, color for the water, um, which I think for the sake of this here is the dark purple grass is really cool for that. And I just need to turn off the coloring here 
and I need to go at 1000% as well. There you go. And we want the walls to be exactly the same as the ground texture. So we're going to set the walls as dark blue grass with 1000 um, scaling percentage. And we, I, I need to turn off the change colors because I have that preset. So now what I can do is I can start to draw that. And um, here's a little trick. When you hold down the shift key in Dungeon Fog, you are not bound to the grid anymore. So I can just hold down the shift key and start tracing my blueprint, which I don't have to follow exactly. It's again, it's just a blueprint, but it gives me a good understanding of where the river should be. And let's crawl down here a little bit. And there you go. Okay, so let's trace, 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 trace. Trace, we know that there's going to be the bridge. Okay, I need to close it. And now we have a river here. And again, I will zoom in a little bit so that you can see what we have here. Now, because we've used the cave tool, we have this outcroppings here. We have this wibbly wobbly line um, and it's a little bit harsh so I'm going to reduce it a little bit um, and now it kind of looks like a river and we can definitely refine that later. So next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add the bridge. Now that is one of the reasons why I've saved the, wait this is annoying here, uh, one of the reasons why I've saved this was because now I can pick up the settings. Don't worry, I'm going to show you the settings in a minute. Um, but now I have uh, the perfect settings that I can use and I can start to draw my bridge. Now, what settings did I use? Let's quickly look at that. Um, for this, for the floor I have used in our stone, natural stone um, texture pack, I've used the solid dark stone and to match the colors a bit of what Keora has created in the asset pack, um, I have set the colorization. So I've activated colorize and I've set the color to 220 and then 20 and 20. So if you go 220, 20, 20, that's perfect. That absolutely fits the color style here. And for the wall, all we did was we made it a little bit darker, which means it's 220, 20, 10. There you go. That doesn't really look like a bridge though. So what we need to do is we need to hide the wall. So I can select the room, I can select the wall and I click on hide. Then this wall disappears. And what I also can do is I can add a little circle in here and I can add a little circle in here. Again, select the wall, go to you. When you have selected the wall, you get those wall settings and the segment type, just set it to circle. All right, so this already looks a lot better. This already looks a little bit like a bridge. Um, let's add a little bit decoration to it. And for that, you go to the props tool, which is the little chair icon here. And you find under the setting Keora, the Dark Lord setting, where we have all the beautiful things that Keora have, has created for us. And I would like to use the gargoyle um, to decorate that bridge. So I'm going to with shift and mouse wheel, I'm going to select the gargoyle, I'm going to rotate it, shift and mouse wheel to rotate, click to place. Now, for some of you, it might have happened that this looks something like this. When you place the gargoyle onto the room, it suddenly is inside the room instead of on top of it. So all you need to do is you need to activate the above wall setting. This will bring the gargoyle above all walls that you have, and he's rendered on top of everything. Okay, I also want this gargoyle to look outside instead of inside. So I'm going to, wait, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm going to mirror it. And now I can duplicate 
control D, by the way, duplicate is control D. Um, I can duplicate it. And all I need to do now is I need to mirror him vertically. So I now have the gargoyle here and there. And we are going to add some little gargoyles and we can just simply place them. Let's place one here. It is above walls, perfect. We've kept that setting. Place it here, here, and here. All right. So I could do the same thing down here, but there's a way to do it faster and I'm going to show it to you. I'm just quickly going to switch to my um, levels and layers. Because here, oh, look at that. This gargoyle is on the stage. Um, if something is placed not directly on the room, it is rendered onto the stage. So I just drag it onto the room and then I will place it here. So if I now look at the content, I see that I have all of them here. Perfect. They are now part of this room. So what I can do is I can create a little folder here and call that just briefly gargoyles. And now I just drag them in there. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. And now they are part of a, a set, which I can duplicate, place here, and flip vertically. There you go. Now they are on both sides and I have very quickly created this bridge. I think all I need to do right now is I go to my brushes. I pick the texture, which is the dark uh, grass texture. And let's see, yeah, opacity is fine. And I will, oh, well, that's, that takes too long. And I can brush on top of that. So now I don't have this direct edge, but I have something like that. All right. You see, just a few minutes and you have the river and you have the um, bridge. Let's leave that for now and let's continue with our, I think I'm going to zoom out for that a little bit. Let's go to 50%. Um, I, well, I can, I can just use that. I will put it here, take the edge points, drag them because now we are creating the, um, the layout. So all I need to do is I select my room tool and I start tracing all those things here. There you go, at the kitchen, right onward, let's do the um, servants access. Now for the foyer, the launch and this little middle room here, we need to pay a little bit attention to this. So when I place down my points, I will create a point here, a point here, and then the same here, because we are going to hide those walls in a minute. The same I'm going to do here, click, click. There you go. And we need to do the same here, which means here, stop, here, stop and there. And now we are getting here and we are getting here. Fine. Um, now let's quickly hide those, select the walls uh, element, either click on hidden or just right click and use the little um, context menu here, the circular menu, hide and hide. And we already have the layout, very cool. I don't need my blueprint anymore for now, so I'm going to deactivate that. And by the way, I'm going to save because saving is very important. <laughs> um, the next thing I usually do because I want to understand how people move around that place is I'm going to add doors and windows. So as you can see, Keora has even created a beautiful new door and window set for us. And we're going to utilize that now. I will start with the double door because that's where probably our players enter. And I would expect that um, if I have guests, I want to impress them. So I have beautiful double doors leading into the dining room. They are connected through double doors with the ballroom and there should be another set of double doors to the launch. 
I think we can also place double doors here. Um, and that's with the double doors for now. In regards to single wooden doors, um, we definitely need one where um, after his normal midnight snack, um, the alchemist can return to his uh, sleeping room. He needs access to the study and he most likely want to um, cross between those rooms on his own. Um, in regards to the kitchen, I would say that because the servants are running in and out all the time, we're going to have op open doors here and here. But honestly, I would hate it if, if the door would always knock me in the back from here. So I'm going to mirror, oops, mirror that in that direction. That's perfect. And we said we want to give, oh, sorry, I still had selected that one. I need to deactivate first. Um, and we've said we want to give them a back entrance. So we're going to place a door here. Now let's continue with the windows. We have beautiful windows here. I'm going to stick with the blue one for now. Um, so we're going to have, this is his bedroom. Um, and he would like to have a little bit of light in here. This is his study. This is very zoomed out. I will go in a little bit, that will help me. This is the study, um, which means he will definitely want to have more light in here. So he's going to have um, three windows in here. Um, let's assume that you can look outside of the foyer a little bit. Um, this is just a room without windows. And if I activate snap to grid, I will be a lot faster here because it's always snapping to the grid. So the dining room is very well lit through windows. For this one, this is the ballroom. Keora has created beautiful long stained windows, um, which we can use here. I think I might need to rearrange them. Yeah, I need to. Okay, so let's try to move you a little bit here. Perfect. And now let's try to make you a little bit more centered. There you go. We can live with that. We can always fine adjust later. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, nope. I want to have, I think this is going to be very dark. If you don't have any windows in here, this is going to be terrible. Also, so let's put a window. Let's put one here. That casts a lot of light in here. And I think if you're working in the kitchen, you would really like to have a window. Um, so let's put a window in here as well. Right. Um, okay. Let's go back out a little bit again. So in terms of our layout, I think we are almost there. Now what we need to do, or the next step I usually do is I start to colorize or change the textures of the floors because I want to have them um, different. Um, so I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change the floor texture to this wooden floor. Now, again, I still have the colorize option on, so I need to turn that off first. And if we're looking at that at 100%, um, apologies, I need to scroll. I think the tiling is really big in terms of if that is five squares, then that is a really big floor um, or the floor tiles are really big. So I would like to reduce them and let's put them down to 150% which is absolutely fine. So I need to do that for all those rooms, but I don't want to spend clicking, selecting each of them and changing and adjusting them. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the paint room tool. When I select that, I have this little pipette and I can pick up the room settings and I can now paste them. So I can say, okay, I want this here. This is wooden, this is wooden. And I would say, this is wooden. Um, and there are weird noises here. Oh, um, oh right. So the so, oh no, my that was my
Sorry, we'll wait for Twi uh, Till to come back. That sounded catastrophic, didn't it? Uh, he just went, oh no, it's my... And that was it. I'm not muted. I'm not muted. I'm not muted. <sighs> I know, I was muted just for a little bit. Just for a little bit. He's like, oh no, that's my... I have no idea what's happened to Till. Um, well, there you go, guys. I see in chat that... Um, there's so much stuff that he's taking us through. It's absolutely amazing just to watch him go through it. And he's so calm. It's like click, 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 click. And I'm watching the time uh, going, well, he's got 20 minutes left. How's he going to finish this? But I think he actually is going to finish it. So I hope you really are. I hope this is valuable to you. I hope it's valuable to you. Um, I know that uh, the, the, the text is not particularly clean, but I think if you watch it again, you will see um, uh, you'll see a lot more, especially if you have that uh, window open. So there we go. Um, yes. Uh, who knew about regions, right? And that copy-paste thing is absolutely amazing. I see that Tiller's back, so I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him uh, pick up again. So here we go, back to back to Till. So all I need to do now is I need to change my layout a little bit. Um, because do you know what happened? Um, my monitor just went. It's smoking in here. My monitor just. Um, well, had a power surge and, and went offline and it flipped the power in the whole office. Um, it's exactly what you want to have while you're doing a, a talk. Okay, so picking up again, um, I need to, again, I think I need to switch my layout a little bit. I'm sorry, I apologize. This will just take a few seconds. Um, and Let's do uh, this one, which I need the laptop screen now. No, okay, let's, let's just, let's not try to get overly complicated. So let's move in here. Um, and let's move that a little bit down. There you go. Um, so where was I? Right, I was just showing you how to copy paste that stuff. Um, and now we want to adjust. First of all, I would like to adjust this color a little bit. I think we need to spice it up a little bit. A little bit. So I'm going to colorize this. I hope Kiora will forgive me. Um, to something like that. So we have a different color, which kind of is, this is the servant area, this is a little bit worn out, and this is the master's room, which is better. Um, so let's pick that up and paint it here. All right, there we go. And now we can continue with this room. And this, as with the whole room, is like the fancy area. This is where he, where he, has um, his, his, his guests, here, where he serves to them. Um, and we are going to, nope, that's the wall setting, sorry. We're going to the floor setting here, and this is fancy floor as well. Here you are. So by now we have, uh, I will go to 80% here, that gives me a better view. By now we have um, colorized our floors. I forgot the kitchen, look at that. We use a kitchen floor here that is very dark, although I like this. Um, I will just probably increase the lightness a little bit. Um, so now we have the kitchen as well. All right, now we have this weird transition here um, between the room, uh, the, 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 the launch and the foyer. And what we can do is we can play with that. So I'm switching to the draw shape tool here, and I'm going to make this also fancy floor um, uh, without colorization. Scaling is 200. That is perfectly fine. And now I can draw something like this here, which creates this leading way. I would though like it to be set in the floor. So I put it beneath grounds. Um, which means that I think there could be small stairs leading up here, which I can also do briefly with the shape tool. So I again take the shape tool and I'm drawing 
something like a stair here, which we're going to make with control shift a little bit smaller and move it here. And by control D, I duplicate that, make it again a little bit smaller and place it here. And suddenly we have the stairs. So if we look at that room, we now have the entrance that is leading up here, up the stairs into that. I do see though that my door needs a little bit of adjustment here. There you go, I think that's better. All right. Um, now, I think it's highly, it's highly unlikely um, that the, the, uh, the whole mansion has just one floor. I think there should be a second floor, something upstairs. Um, although we are not going to pay attention to the upstairs room um, in this session, I think I would, it would be nice to show you how you can create beautiful stairs. So if you go to the room section, um, to the room tool, and we are creating now something like this. So a little uh, triangle here. When we select that and we make it circular and we flip the circle to the outside, we now have this little niche here. And if we go into the advanced mode of the drawing tool and we change the floor texture also to the same natural stone that we have for the other one and colorize it in the same color. All we need to do is we need to hide the inner wall segment, like the inner wall shadow and the inner wall outline of our advanced settings here. And we suddenly have something like that. Now that is not a stair obviously, but that is what we need to create our stair. Because now we're going to do the same thing and we're going to create a room that goes like two squares from here, two squares down, two squares down, and is closing back up again. Because by utilizing the uh, circle, our circle is not properly drawn here. We need to ramp that up a little bit. Um, and a circle here, that is also going to the outside, we now have this area. So if we go in there, if we hide that room, and if we also go in there and make this a little bit thinner, let's put it to four and four, we now have this, um, which is already really good for using a stair. Now, if you look at, let me just show you. Now, if you look at that area here, um, you can see that there is a slight offset um, of your, because that is a 12 by 12 uh, thick wall, and that is a four thick wall. So all I need to do is I just shift that up a little bit and we can close the gap. I'm sorry, you're not seeing it, now you're seeing it. Right, so last but not least, let's put some stairs in there. So I go into my prop tool, I type stair, and we have those round stairs here which I can now, wait, they should not be above walls, otherwise something weird happens. And I can scale them up and place them here. And now we have this entrance area with the stairs leading up. Right, we can now go on and decorate more and more um, in details, but I would like to now start adding props. And let's start with the study because I think that is an interesting thing to show you. Um, so first of all, tomorrow I'm going to talk way more in detail about lighting and, and shadow systems, dynamic shadows and all that stuff, because we are kind of running out of time and I would like to show you at least some prop placement before I will hopefully find um, the screen where all the questions are and answer them. So let's go into prop placement here. And um, if you select, let's go, for example, I know that we have, um, I know that we have, uh, what was it called? It was an oven or something like that. Um, I think it was down there somewhere. The fireplace, there you go. If I place the, 
If I put the fireplace in here because he wants to have it warm and cozy, you can see that the fireplace by himself already emits light, which is absolutely perfect because if we're now starting to add a little chair here, because that's where he's going to sit, we can tell this chair to, if we activate the light settings, cast the shadow. And that's a, well, that's a long shadow because the light source is low. So I think that is pretty fine. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a beautiful table um, and I need to find them. So I will go for um, small table. Let's look at that one. That is perfect. Let's put a small table here. And I know that there is a writing desk somewhere. Um, so let's find that one. Lectern, that's fine as well. Let's put one here. And um, there you are, it's just called the desk. So let's put a desk here. Um, and we can then add books. But we want them um, book, it's singular. Um, so there's an open book on the table. Um, there's another book here. And there is an open book here. And um, was it sheet? Was it paper? I think it was paper. Um, we can put some papers here. There's a paper, there's one on the floor. There's one on the desk. There's probably one, although that should not be a bias on the, um, on, on, on the fireplace. And we can then use some brushes to add a little bit of detail to the floor. So I will now go in and I will, let's start, let's use the wooden floor. We shouldn't use it at, we should use it at the same size but we're going to darken it a little bit. Um, so let's darken the floor texture here. And when we're now bringing that in, we can have little scratch marks here. We can even go in and try, although this is really experimental. Um, wood, worked wood, we have scratched wood Let's see if the scratched would, well, it, I think I think it will work. Um, I will control set that, undo it, because I think the texture needs to be rotated by 90 degrees. And if we work, no, definitely not. That is absolutely the wrong direction. It should not have been rotated by 90 degrees. Let's keep it like that. And we add little scratch marks. Um, now, keep in mind, we are still working at the lighting, at the ambient lighting of 100% and 100%. So what I would do, I would later start and reduce that, um, which means it's getting a lot darker, which also means that we need to add more light sources because otherwise our players will not see anything on the map. And although we think it's really cool, our players will hate it. Um, so find the right balance between light, no light, um, that will be very helpful. Um, what I, I think this is, this is really empty here. I think we should put something here. Let's see if we can find something that is a Kaora asset and that works nicely. A chair, a chest, well, maybe um, a couch, well, why not? He wants to sit there and relax a little bit. Um, he might want to have a little couch table um, next to it. So we have a round table here, but I know that there is a coffee table somewhere. Dining table, no, we're not looking for that.
coffee table right above, blind as I am. So let's put a little coffee table here and um, let's add some candles on that table. As you can see, the candles emit light as well. They add too much to that because they have a terrible range right now. So we're going to reduce the range a little bit and we are going to probably change the color and reduce the brightness a little bit. There you go. Now the chair should also cast a shadow and I think the table, nope, that's not going to work because he has candles on top of it. That one could cast a shadow and the lectern could cast a shadow. All right. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm out of time, which means here we are. We're going to finish this map. Either you are going to finish this map as part of your homework, or um, we are going to pick up tomorrow because if you submit your work, if you've worked on the map and you're submitting it, um, we will take that and review it together with Kayora in, in our workshop tomorrow. And then we will um, continue filling it with assets, adding brushes, refining it, where Kayora himself will add to this by telling me what to do while I'm trying to do it. Um, no questions for now, but I have saved all the questions, which means uh, I can address them tomorrow in the workshop and I will come back to those and I will take some time specifically to answer those questions for you. Apologies for the technical um, difficulties. Um, it's still rather smelly in here because that computer monitor just breathed out his, his life. Um, but we were back and now I hand over to, I don't know who. <laughs>